I'm Charles Vaught. Roof falls are the number one immediate killer of miners today. Sometimes, however, a roof fall doesn't kill. It simply maims. I have Larry Strayer with me today, and Larry will tell the story of the accident that occurred at his mine. He'll begin at the beginning, take us minute by minute through what happened to him, and then tell us a little bit about what his life's been like after. Larry? Well, I'll try to tell the story the best that I can remember. Uh, it was just another June day, June the 5th. Of, my brother worked on our crew. I went down. I always pick him up on the way to work. And uh, well, I picked him up and we went out to work and went in and got dressed and got on a man trip and started in the mine. And uh, we got in there and we was pulling, pulling stumps. And we just finished up on the right side, pulling the last stump, and we started uh, moving all the machinery and that over. I was a border operator, and uh, my cousin Ernie was the other border operator in that crew. And uh, we was uh, moving the border over and that to the left side to start pulling across again. And uh, we was hanging cables up in that, and I don't know where Ernie got to, but. Uh, we was gonna belt off that night. We was working second shift. We was gonna belt off that uh, night. So uh, we finished hanging cables up and I started down towards the feeder to help them guys start belting off. And as I was going down there, they took a, they started splitting a the stump. They took one cut out of a, the stump there. And I noticed that uh, Barry was, the miner operator was up, uh, Looking at the roof, he just pulled the miner back. And uh, so I figured uh, I'd go up and give him a hand. It looked like he was getting ready to pull down some loose rock. So I <clears throat> went up and talked to Barry, and he told me that uh, there's a loose piece of rock hanging in there. And he tried to cut it down with the miner, but he was turning the cross cut, and he couldn't get the, the bull wheels on the roof the whole way to cut it down. So we uh, got the rock bar and we tr trying to pry it down and it was sort of feathered edged out maybe two foot, foot from the last row of bolts there. So uh, <clears throat> Barry was on the other side of the miner and we was trying to pry it down there for a few minutes and we decided that we'd just uh, leave it up and bolt it up. So I, uh, I just turned to start walking back towards the back end of the miner and I just got a glimpse of something off of my right side there and and it was like in the like the whole the whole cut came down. And uh I yeah, sorta of seen it got a little glimpse of it coming down and I tried to jump at the same time I tried to yell over to Barry for him to get out of the road. And uh but before we had, you know, time to do anything, it was like down, come down really fast. And uh, it caught me right be on my left leg, right about from the knee down. And uh, when I was laying on the ground there for a couple seconds, I could uh, hear Barry over there trying to yell, I guess. I talked to him after that and he said, he, there was like a lot of rock on him and he couldn't couldn't breathe too good I guess he you know a lot of rock was pressing on him well I was laying there for a couple of seconds and the boss come running up around the corner and he stopped at me and I told him that I was all right that Barry was on the other side of the miner and he uh, I, I figured he was in pretty bad shape so I told him to go over and help Barry and a few seconds after that, Ernie came up and he come to me first and I told him to go over and help the boss and get the rock off of Barry over there. So I was laying there for, for a few seconds and there was a few other of the guys came up from the crew. They was all over trying to get Barry out from underneath the rock. 
And uh, while I was laying there, I really wasn't too worried about my leg. I was just wondering if Barry was going to be all right because I knew he got covered up pretty good and I didn't know if he was going to make it or what. Well, they finally got Barry out and got him on a stretcher and that. Then Ernie came over and uh, there's a pile of posts laying there behind me. He grabbed two two props and put a prop underneath the rock and put another prop underneath the post to try to wedge the rock up so I could pull my leg out. We got his uh, back against the roof and put his feet on the props and he got her up so far but I still couldn't pull my leg out. Then my younger brother Brian come up. He was a buggy runner on the crew. And uh, Ernie tried prying down again and then Brian pulled me out from underneath the rock. Well, luckily, Ernie was an EMT. <clears throat> he uh, cut my pant leg up and cut my boot off and that, but he was uh, pretty messed up. And there was a lot, a lot of blood in that. And he uh, put one of them air splints so you blow up on it. And then uh, they put me on a man trip. And we was on our way out. And I noticed, I remember there was a couple times and there couple low spots there, the roof was only a couple inches, you know, from my face. Just wonder if he's going to clear or not. But we finally got outside then, and uh, it was, that was towards the end of the shift then, and a lot of the guys from the shift starting was standing around a man trip there. Everybody was standing around. Nobody was, it just seemed like nobody knew what to say. Everybody, everything was quiet. And there was a guy there that I ran track with in high school. I just more or less looked up at him and said, I guess we won't be won't running no races within the near future here. And just something to break the ice to let everybody know that I was all right. And he was getting buried on the, in the ambulance then. And then another ambulance came and they put me on the ambulance. And uh, I remember it seemed like a long, long time to get to the hospital. Whenever we got there, one of the owners of the mine was there. Whenever he opened the ambulance, he asked me how I was in that. And it was pretty late at night then. And then my wife come running over, and uh, she was all shook up in that. And I sort of wanted to say something, though. It was. It was her birthday then, so I just told her happy birthday and see to settle her down a little bit. And then, uh, well, they took me in the operating room then, and then and they just, uh, well, they put me out, I guess. I woke up the next morning, and they had my leg strapped up in the air with all kind of pins and stuff going through it. And they, uh, the next couple of days, they took me down to the operating room and operate on about once a day, and to try to fix it up, but after a couple of days, the doctor came in and said that there was nothing they could do to, to save it. They'd have to take it off. So at the time, it really didn't bother me too much because it was just like, I don't like a bad toothache or something. It really hurt a lot, and I just wanted to, to you know, quit hurting, so just wanted the pain to go away, I guess. So, uh, so then they come up one day, and they... They took me down and they took my leg off and and then I woke up back up in the hospital room. I just remember I kept looking down at my leg and it just seemed like it was, you know, supposed to be there. For about a day or two there I just uh was sorta of in the days I guess, you know, sorta. Of. But uh, after a while after a while I got over it a couple weeks later I went home. I was happy to be home with my kids and my wife. And, uh, and then uh, I got a, an artificial leg and then the company, I was lucky the company left me go back to work. They have a pretty big shop outside the mine that they rebuild mine equipment and work on man trips and that. So they give me a job out there that's what I'm doing now. And uh, Barry, he uh, 
the other guy that was in the accident, he uh, had pins put in his legs there. I guess he had them in for almost a year. And then he, he finally did get them taken out then. And uh, he's doing all right. He's probably loading coal right now somewhere. He's uh, one of the hardest workers I ever worked with and can't say enough about him. He's a really nice fella. And uh, the only thing that I have to say is I know there's a lot of you guys out there that likes to fish and hunt and stuff. Well, I, I, I like to fish and hunt a lot, and I miss going jumping on the brush pile and waiting for a rabbit to come out the other end or dragging a buck out at the end of a hunting day or putting a pair of sneakers on and go wading in a river fishing for bass or whatever. And I have, I have four kids at home. I have a little boy that's five years old now. He just learned to ride a bike this year. And uh, it just seems like it really hurts you whenever you can't run alongside them to try to help them ride a bike for the first time. There's like a lot of things that you, know, you want to do that you can't do anymore. And uh, then I know a lot of you guys are probably going into mine after watching this film or tomorrow or whenever. All I can say is when you go in there, you know, if you're going to do something stupid or whatever, you ought to just stop and think about it for a couple of seconds because it, it may, you know, mess your life up forever. What really isn't worth that one mistake. You know, it ain't worth it to your family or to the guys that you work with. They say hindsight is twenty twenty. What could you have done differently looking back that would have kept this from happening? Well, like, uh, well, I guess whenever me and Barry was pulling that roof down, we got pretty involved in what we was doing there. We would have just stood like we was in by the bolts there a few feet. If we would have, you know, just stopped and thought about what we was doing there before, you know, we went ahead and did it, you know, we'd probably be all right today. Were you still in by the bolts when it fell on you? Yeah, we was we wasn't in real far. We just like maybe two or three feet. Like I said, I really didn't even get time. I just turned around and come down. I can remember laying there and looking up at the bolts, hoping that the bolts above my head was going to hold the rest of the roof up there. So you almost got back under the bolts uh, before it fell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, a lot of guys think they're fast in the mine and they can get out of the road in time, but for as fast as that roof come down, like I said, I just turned around and I didn't even get a chance to jump or nothing. The, the whole place was down. <laughs>